Mark is usually here with us because he he'll set up the camera. So today I'm fully blowing my clothes. Very different quantities. Here, let me get the dentist on the band. I'm advertising for your yellow dog. Yeah, oh, when we get our ugly sweaters on, I'm sure you'll want to picture that too. So no, he's really good. This is really a, a nice setup. It's, it's nice. nice. Quiet. This is this is all professional. Check this out. No way. Are you check. So we'll do an introduction. <laughs> Uh, we'll do a quick intro. Hey, everybody. Tyler McClendon. Welcome. Uh, hey, it's Christmas. It is. We're getting close to it. So well, then why is it raining? It should be it's snowing. because we're in like a rainforest that will not let us see the light of day. But hey, we're happy. Uh, Tyler McClendon here with Dennis On Demand. Uh, lucky to have with me Dr. Ed Lowe. Hey. It's good to see you, Pleasure. Yeah. On, hey, listen. What else am I going to do on a Friday morning, my first day off? <laughs> That's right. With a big bit bit of a coconut after the <laughs> night bef- if before with my team, and to come out and hang out with you. Oh, this is so awesome! So thank you. So, anyways, as I was saying, we uh, we Michael is uh, he speaks like he came in and he spoke at our at our club there at mm-hmm. your at your study club, and like just getting him out there. I think we were we were going to have him speak at the PDC. Or we're going to have like a um, like a separate room to have him talk about marketing yeah. and. Just telling your own story and, and what that's all about. Um, just like, because I just find that telling your story in the world of dentistry is becoming such a, it's becoming front and center, you know? Well, I, I think that um, nowadays people want to know a little bit more about you. Yeah. Um, you know, whether, it, you know, from a doctor point of view, you want to know what your colleague is like. Uh, you want to know what they do, how they do it, and if they're successful. You know, you want to you want to model that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're a, you're if you're a dentist also who wants to learn something, you're going to look up mentors that you know are available on webinars and everything else to be able to access that. Right. Uh, from a patient point of view, I think that um, when you're out there, um, you're able to you know. Know a little bit of the dentist. It's funny, you know, when patients come in, they go, "Oh yeah, I, I know all about you. Yeah, I know, know you're yeah. actually you're you're not as good looking in person as you are on your social media. I, you know, it's 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 smoke and mirrors. Uh, um, they know about you. They know about your practice. They know about what you do and and everything else. They're well educated when they come in. They Whereas, already know. Well, you, you you dial it back. Maybe you know, fifteen years ago. When people come in, you know, all they've seen are a still picture, maybe a little writing underneath in, in a magazine. And Top rated dentist in Vancouver. Well, wait, they're, they're like, <laughs> hmm, hmm I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I like that. Or they'll come in and they go, I like it in here. It's one or the That's other. It's hit and miss, right? So now they, they I had a, a, a patient once. Used to, she came in. I have glass doors in front of my office. It's a beautiful she, office. She, she came in. She went out. She circled in. She walked away. Did a couple flybys. Oh, I, she did a couple flybys over a week, and then she finally decided to come in. I just, uh, I'm glad I had a looking glass that she kind of look look into. But if it was a solid Looks door. Clean. I wonder how she would have gotten in. I'm Looks really clean. curious. These people look <laughs> professional. I, okay. I, I, I wouldn't know how she got, got in. She might have gone. Hmm. You, Johnny. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you my teeth now. Um, okay, so I'm going to do the compulsory thing. Um, this is we call this podcast a day in the life. So, okay. um, but I like I, for you. I, I mean, we've been friends for a number of years now, and I think mm-hmm. that this is this is more just us jamming on some stuff. Like, I mean, I want to talk a little bit about cosmetic dentistry, of course. Sure, um, it, it is it is what you're known for, um, and implant dentistry, of course. Uh, and then, so I, do you mind if I read a little bit about you? Just so sure, so long as it's not long and boring. But <laughs> I, I cut and paste to. a few things here about you, but sure. you know, if you're like, hey man, there, th- you didn't talk enough about me, you just okay. feel free to hit me in the side of the head. Uh, Dr. Ed Lowe believes in a, uh, improved appearance and self-confidence through conservative aesthetic dental techniques. I want to come back to that. Sure. Uh, Dr. Lowe is an accredited member and an accreditation examiner in the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, a director and founding member of the Canadian Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry, and holds fellowships in the International Academy of Dental Facial Aesthetics, American College of Dentists, and the International Congress of Oral Implantologists. That sounds about right. That's a mouthful. Oh, I just try to collect things up. It <laughs> sounds really good. You're a, hoarder, you're a dental uh, well, learning you know, hoarder. 
Well, I, I like dental C. I think a, a big part of it is is that, you know, you always want to, I'm just always trying to learn something new. Right? Yeah. Because otherwise, I, I, frankly, I get a little bit bored and antsy and I just want to learn something new. Right. A lot of it's for me. I think uh, just uh, to for, for, for patients, they, they, they like to know that you've done something. Right. But a lot of the things that I collect are just, it, it's for my own accomplishment. It's, it's not uh, really for anything else so a lot of things I achieve I feel good about it well it's kind of why I do this too right yeah like I mean for me like Dennis on Demand sort of came out of a <clears throat> out of a, a want to sort of showcase my clients yourself yeah. being one of them uh, I, stop messaging me um, yourself being one of them so for me it's like I I kind of I like learning about this stuff like I every time I bring somebody into this room and we talk about dentistry I find myself learning something new about your journey about your training, mm -hmm. about something that's new in dentistry, so uh, I'm right there with you. Well, it's it's it, and the same thing. I mean, look, when you come in and you talk about a product, I mean, talk about this setup. I mean, talk about different things. I'm always excited. Go like green screen. You can make me look better. You mean I get look <laughs> like I'm in Paris? I, you know, you, you never <laughs> Tell know. Tell your Spider Man. Well, it's 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 really interesting, and I think that uh, a lot of the times, um, you know, we don't know how educated. A professional is or do they just graduate out of school and never take another course are they with someone who takes a lot of courses and keeps chasing that mm -hmm. are they a person who really gets more involved in it and writes a lot or or teaches or lectures and what exactly does that mean mm -hmm. right you know how important it is like all i know is that if i was president of the college of dental surgeons you know i i, I see patients do this my dentist is the president of the College of Dental Surgeons, or my pre dentist is the president of the BCDA. Right. That's, I, it's politics. It has nothing, nothing to do with your ability as a dentist, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things I do, I'm not a politician. I'm happy there are great people who, who do that for, for our, our profession. But I think as a, a, as a patient, you know, you kind of want to make sure that your, your doctor you know, keeps up with all the latest and greatest that keeps happening uh, on a daily basis. Things change all the time. Well, that sort of brings me, that was one of the questions I had for you was, so you go to school. Um, mind if I talk about your schooling a little bit? No, you go, go right ahead. Someone's ringing. Is that me? That is not me. That was uh, me, but I'll put it on mute. <laughs> okay, so 1980, no, 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 Bachelor of Science degree in Biology from University of Victoria. 19, <clears throat> graduate of University of British Columbia's Faculty of Dentistry. Did they find me? It's like a sonar. They're searching. We're underwater right now. <laughs> <laughs> Some sound effects going on. Uh, uh, so uh, graduated from the Faculty of Dentistry from uh, UBC. And then in 1989, you established the Lowe Center of Cosmetic and Implant Dentistry in downtown Vancouver. So I graduate from dental school. Mm -hmm. I come out. I set up a clinic, I buy a clinic, whatever I want to do, I associate. Um, am I doing cosmetic dentistry day one? No, I think, um, you know, here's, you I, You want to do cosmetic dentistry day okay. one. You want to do every kind of dentistry day one. Let me put this in perspective. Let's I, just, I don't know if you guys are trained for that. Is well, that extra well, training? Well, often it is. Um, you know, for, I'll, I'll say it right now, cosmetic dentistry is not a specialty. It's not a dental specialty. Okay. But I, I treat it like one. Uh, you know, they're, 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 you take courses and you try to learn more about it. It's like every, let's take physician. Every mm -hmm. physician can do some sort of minor surgery. Surgery, right. But how much they do depends on their training. I mean, they're not going to do open heart surgery. But there comes a point where they, they can take a lot of training and do a certain amount if, they're, if that's their interest, right? And that's the same with cosmetic dentistry. No, everybody can do cosmetic dentistry, which which literally means you take a situation and you make it better you than what it, it was. And you can enhance it aesthetically. Uh, it, it may not be functional, but it, it just looks better than what it is. And that's what cosmetics is. And I think when you get out of at the school, for example, and you say, well, I want to do a lot of cosmetic dentistry. You'll always, you know, even if you took a dark tooth and made it lighter, you've done cosmetic dentistry. Okay. But at, at how advanced and how much of it you do is 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 what makes it uh, a bit different. So as you do more things, you do need to take some training with that to, to be able to do it well. To broaden you can do it well. There's a difference between doing it and doing it well. 
Right. And so, you know, sometimes I, I'm going to explain this because I do that when, I, when I'm doing my lectures is the difference yeah. between cosmetic and aesthetic dentistry. Okay. So cosmetic there's, and restorative dentistry. So you, you look up a dentist and, and they'll say, well, we do restorative and family. We do cosmetic and, and, and general. This is and great what to know. So, mean? Yeah, because when mean, you're Googling a dentist, this is great to know. So yeah, no, absolutely. So I, I, think, I think, you know, it, it's good information to know because I certainly didn't know. I go, wow, some people do kind of like they're pretty busy. So if you do general dentistry, you do a little bit of everything. And that's what, in my, in my opinion, the, the, the the uh, definition of that means you do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do general and family dentistry, it means that you do everything general and you see kids, a lot of it, and a lot of families. And, and, and depending on where you are, that's maybe something you want to say. Right. Like, but if you do general and cosmetic dentistry, what does that co word cosmetic dentistry? It means you, you enhance things, you make things look a bit better. General aesthetic dentistry means you do beautiful aesthetic, beautiful dentistry that's functional, works well, fits in the mouth, and is a little harder than just cosmetic dentistry because in the in the end the result is cosmetic, maybe cosmetic, okay. but everything works as, works just as well. Right. Let me give you an example. If a person does restorative dentistry on a front tooth that's darker, you may you may it may be chipped or something, and you put a cap on it or crown. Color may not match, you know, may not even work very well mm -hmm. or bite. But it's better than what they had, which was a broken tooth. That's okay. restorative dentistry. Okay. So you're, you're, you're getting them what they need here and now. They, they need to get something <clears throat> back here so they, they can function or eat. Right. But it, as a result, it looks, it looks like they have a tooth. It may not be pretty. It may not uh, work well, but mm -hmm. they have something there. That's mm -hmm. restoring something, right? Putting it back and rebuilding it. Right. Now... Cosmetic dentistry, if you took that tooth and let's say uh, you, you just, you know, the tooth doesn't fit, all the teeth are crooked, but you, but you simply made it white again, or you put a, a veneer on it or a crown on it and you put the tooth back on there, it doesn't, it's just, it just matches the others. That's cosmetic dentistry, right? right? But it's not aesthetic because a person may have really crowded teeth, right? So... So what's the difference between aesthetic dentistry? Now, aesthetic dentistry, if somebody came in with really crowded teeth and a broken tooth, you would go around saying, you would look at everything. So you have to have a knowledge of orthodontics, which is straightening teeth, periodontics, which is gums, uh, oral surgery, which is moving the jaws and, and building the, uh, building the, the, the structure of, the, of, of a person, root canals, uh, endodontics, which is some teeth may need that. Uh, you have to un have a knowledge in in general of the other specialties so very as well. So it's more comprehensive. Right. And when you put a person be back together, everything's straight. Everything chews well. It, everything is the right color, and everything's functional. And that's why aesthetic dentistry is is really the definition of what we all want to achieve. Right. Cosmetic is what the public knows as. Oh. I want cause something cosmetic done. So that's the difference between the two in a long winded way. No, it's, uh, it's, it's good to make the difference because like, you know, if you're, if you're Googling a dentist, you know, say, say like, here we are in Langley, right? So if we move to Langley or if I move to Vancouver or whatever, and I'm looking for a dentist, I Google a dentist and I say, I see Dr. Ed Lowe and I, and I make the, 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 the realization, okay, cosmetic aesthetic dentistry. It's important for me to know the difference between those things and say, okay, well, this person over here just does cosmetic or they're moving, they're trying to broaden their scope into more of an aesthetic area. At least I know that now to say, hey, you know what? I, are you guys able to make something that's a little more aesthetic and, and using that word in my, in my vernacular, I guess, right? Yeah. It's because aesthetic isn't as, as popular as cosmetic. So um, it's, it's popular amongst I think aesthetic uh, means for me a bit healthy too. And I think once again, I said your, your patient looking it up may not understand what they mean. It's more for the professional to say that I do aesthetic dentistry. Right. Then I, for me to say, well, I do cosmetic dentistry. It, it means two different things to me, but to a, a person looking up uh, a dentist, it may mean very little. They may, might mean the same. They may choose cosmetic because it sounds better. It's I, I think my greatest example is this person comes in and they've got really crooked teeth. The teeth don't fit together. And they say, can I get veneers done? And you say, yes. So you do veneers, you cut their teeth down. Maybe some of them are crowned and you make them a set of teeth that look straight. That's cosmetic. Right. But over the long term, their teeth really aren't straight. 
Um, you know, their, their, their bite isn't proper. It's they have functional. six white front teeth, like neon lights. It's not functional. So it's not really as aesthetic by, right. by, or functional in my terms. And so I would rather practice for me, you know, whatever, whenever I can, being conservative and, and doing something functional is, is, is the way to go. Because I want things Focus to last. Focus on function first. Yeah. I want, when you're 80 years old, I want you to be able to, to, to eat and, 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 and smile, right? And, and, and when you're 90, maybe you just want to eat <laughs> at that point. <laughs> you don't care too much about pass smiling. Me, pass me and, the and yogurt. That's functional. And that's really important because sometimes I've had, um, you know, at times I've had a patient, uh, you know, when you have a patient come in, yeah, you know, it's, it's um, uh, you know, cosmetics and, and, and the appearance of teeth drives the case, we call it. Like, so a person comes in. They're in your office because they want to look great, yeah. right? So they say, "Yeah, I want to get." What done. brought you here? Yeah, what brought you here? So a lot of time, you, you if if you're if you know, I see patients like this all the time. They say, "Why why are you here?" Well, I'm here to see you, Doctor Loa, because I want to get a set of veneers. I want to get veneers, and you'd be surprised. You think I do veneers all day, right? But I'll tell you, one out of five people actually get the veneers. A lot of the time, they aren't suited for veneers because patients go, I think I'll get veneers because I've seen them on social media. I've seen them on TV. Self, the selfie generation. Actors have it. And wait, actors have it. <laughs> that means I want that, it. That, 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 you know, I want it. Is or there an actor some, in here somewhere? Yeah, yeah I don't know. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what happens is is that, uh, you know, they want... They, they want the appearance and they, and they, and they come, in, come in to see me and they say, well, I want that. And often I have to kind of say, well, listen, I want these things to last a long time. Maybe mm -hmm. veneers isn't the right way to go. Let me, let me talk to you about you know, how we can, how, how we can uh, get your teeth in a position so that they're healthy and they're going to last a long time. So Especially maybe, if you're younger. Right. So maybe ortho. So they'd say, well, you know what? And you hate we to hear go, it. We might yeah. get to a veneers eventually. Mm -hmm. And just, just to, we should, I should, I, I like throwing the definitions out there. We'll do this as a separate thing, um, what a veneer is. But um, you might, this, so someone comes in and says that to you, and you're like, well, you know what? Maybe we should take a few steps back and look yeah. at ortho first. And by ortho, I mean moving your teeth, braces, or Invisalign, whatever that is, to then look at, okay, let's get them straighter and functional, and then look at making them more aesthetic exactly. in the end. Yeah, for me, it's, uh, you know, when you think about it, you know, it, yeah, we call it aesthetics drives the case, the function finishes it. That's what okay. I always say. So you'll come in to see me because you want it to look good. And some people will say, hey, you know what, I'll slap it in. Uh, I, I'm going to make you look good. And then you'll come in and you say, I, I know I, my teeth look great, but I can't bite or they hurt all the time. Right. Or I get food stuck in between them. And, and now, you know, you've straight, and, and the worst thing you can have is a patient going, I wish I never got this done because I could eat properly before and the teeth didn't hurt. Mm. Right. So, so now the benefit of having a look great outweighs the fact that they're uncomfortable. They, they, they can't chew, they uh, you know, and, and, and stuff gets stuck in between. And so they have buyer's remorse or they regret that they ever had it done. I don't want that. Right. So I will be honest with you when I say, you know what? Tyler, you're not a case for veneers, and I want. And, and if you understand why you do it, you'll do it. And that, fortunately, we have tools to be able to show people right. wonderful things. I mean, we taught you know, like the I, an intraoral scanner mm -hmm. uh, that I use, uh, the iTero that I use to to scan and get a person to see actually what the teeth look like. Because you we, can show them before and after. Yeah, before and after. Yeah. Um, you can you can do <clears> that to, to to move teeth on the iTero element, so you're you're able to show them. Shameless before. plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> some scanners it can do. No, 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 no. It's okay. We were our <laughs> well. Our listen, it, you know, it's uh, this is what I use in my office. So I'm honest. Well, about I, saying I'm, not we don't, pl I'm plugging it. Yeah, uh, we don't. Anyway. We we don't censor ourselves. We there's a tarot. There's there's there's, there's lots of great lots scanners of great scanners out there. Out there. But the reason and it's a great scanner. It is. I choose that one because of that fact. And so a lot of people can say, Hey, you know what? That's that's what I can look like. Uh, we use uh, digital smile design, which is uh, a program where we can show you what you look like. Right. Uh, on 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 um, on a computer program on an iPad. So how does that work? You take the you take the a picture of the person's face and you have a, a rendering of the teeth. So you take the you picture. Design, you you literally design it to fit their face. You know, and okay. that's two D. I mean, there th it, now we're getting into face scanners where you can design a person. It's pretty creepy, but a face scanner where you scan the face. You literally have a mold of yourself. I I, I had it done on I, I, my my friend Nelson Rigo, um, my ceramist kind of kind of did 
did it for me one time. I said, that's kind of creepy. It's a mask of yourself. Right. Can you imagine now? Bobby Purdue showed me that before. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah it's, 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 it's really kind of creepy. So you, you literally can put, uh, um, you have a, a face, you put uh, the position, the person's existing teeth in the proper pa- place in the face, and you have a comb beam CT where you actually, where the skeleton is in the right place. Oh, and wow. you literally have a computer mold of your head. So they're like, I took your head and I stuck it into the computer uh, and, and be able to work with that. And how accurate is that? I mean, it's tremendously accurate. I mean, we couldn't do it. We used to use photos. I've been in the game for a long time. So uh, you can have like a 3D, say, like you can see the profile. 3D rendering so like, of everything. You don't just see it from the front. You can turn their faces. Turn their faces to the side smile. and they see everything else. And like, when they smile, you can, you can see their existing smile, but you can also put something in and render, say, well, potentially... Uh, this is what you can look like. I'm sure Dr. Birdie talked about he you can potentially show a person where their implants go and what more or less the final final look is going to be like. Well, yeah, and it, it um, I didn't know you uh, you imported a CT a CBCT. So by CBCT I mean a 3D image of the of the face of the skeleton of the yeah, skeleton yeah. right all so the hard tissues. Knowing that <clears throat> with this 3D software that you can do that 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 for me validates it so much more because now you're actually working off of the structure of your face yeah. instead of just having like a 2d image where it's like, yeah, that's kind of what it's going to look like. This is like, Oh, this is a 3d model of your mm-hmm. face. Oh, it, it's pretty creepy. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, crazy. Like, it's like I put your head in the box. <laughs> I think I'm thinking of seven here with Morgan in Freeman box? and Brad Pitt. I'm mean, creeping me out here a little bit, but I know it's in the box. But what do my teeth look like? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, it, it's kind of nice to be able to do that. And, and imagine you're a patient; you can't decide. You know, for us, we're, a lot of us are different learners. Some people are, are are visual learners. Some people are auditory learners. Some people are kinesthetic; they want to touch things and be able to know. But a lot of people simply want to want to see it, right? Yeah. And to be able to grasp it, you can describe it with photos. You can write all the brochures and paperwork you want but you know we as dentists get it but you, you got to imagine your 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 patients do they really understand what it is aside from they see the one picture they see a photo mm-hmm. they see a celebrity on on the on tv and they say well i kind of want their teeth make me look like that well i get requests for that you yeah. know i, I want to look like halle berry i want to look like julia roberts teeth and i want to look like angelina jolie or i'll bring someone in but that's not you. I, you know, I'm putting somebody else's teeth in your mouth. In your mouth, yeah. But it may not work because they have different shaped faces. They've got bigger they're, teeth. They're, they're different they're, people. They have the, those yeah. larger teeth don't really fit. Your face is half the size of Julia Roberts, so it doesn't work for you. Uh, speaking of which, you're you're kind of the guy in Vancouver for that, aren't you? Well, I, I do a lot of it. You know, I don't. <laughs> no, I, don't I mean, say. like for celebrities and stuff like that. You have a lot. I have a few people, people that have come, come through through okay. my office, and you know, I, I don't talk about it a lot because. No. Can you uh, tell you us? Know. Who? Well, no, I have had different people come in. Patient uh, confidentiality. Oh, no, not at all. I'm happy <laughs> to say because they they've shared it with with me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so you know, I'm pretty happy to say that the most recent was Orlando Bloom was in. Really? And, you worked yeah. on Orlando Bloom? Yeah. And actually made his bite better because uh, he was pretty happy about that. So he says, anytime I'm rolling in town, you're my guy. Uh, you know, Kim Basinger was in. You know, she had uh, you know a couple of veneers break off while she was up here wow. shooting. You know, I, I I can happily say you know I, I worked on on Bo Derek as well. For those who remember who she is, and I do. And I had to. Uh, I'm aging myself now. I, I had to take out one of her front teeth and and uh, put her back together again while she was up here shooting. And so that was a slight to her. That sounded awful. I'm aging myself. I didn't mean, I didn't mean that way. She's. <laughs> <laughs> I just meant I remember watching as a kid. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and Daco- not being allowed to watch Bo Derek. Yeah, movies. Dakota Dakota Johnson was up when she was uh, filming. So I've had different people in in my Dakota office. But D- Dakota Fanning or is it Dakota Dakota Johnson? Am I? You're you're Dakota. lost. You don't wow, even know I who she lost. is. Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my wife watched it. I don't know. Well, I know. It's a girl. I thought it's a girl. It's, yeah, it's that's one of those things. A little insight into my <laughs> my marriage love life there, <laughs> honey. You're gonna miss this part. I sorry. Where well, listen. Are? Everybody has, you know. I, I think, in all honesty, everybody has, um, um, you know, a celebrity or somebody well known that comes into their office. I'm speaking about the dentist as well. You know, and it's, right. you, know, you can, uh, you, you know, for for you. I mean, you, you if you're going to use or work with them or mention their name, it's just nice to ask and. It's okay mm. to take a picture or do something with it because some people actually do mind. 
but right. they, they don't. But I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have a lot of uh, people that are in the entertainment and film industry, whether they're in front of the camera, behind the camera, they're, they're part of some crew that go through my office, and they're great people. They're like everyone right. else. I've had, you know, you know, you know what... Being an actor no. yourself, you know what goes on in any sort an of... An ex-actor. Uh, uh, in, in, in a production, whether it's film or television, it's a large crew. It's not just the people in front of the camera. There's well, a lot of people behind it. And there's been such a huge resurgence in the last five or six years in Vancouver. I mean, I, I mean, my shift from the acting profession to mm -hmm. dental was, you know, in 2010, it was, a, it was a tough go. You know, having a young family, trying to make a coming out of the, the first decade of the, the, the 21st century yeah. where, you know, there was there was a decent amount of work and then all of a sudden it just disappeared and you've got a mortgage and a child to look after. You're like, holy crap. Well, I know. I, it's there, just right? like, it, that's a funny thing because my this morning um, I was sitting around and she goes, what does Tyler look like, Sharon? I said, I, said, I think you've met him before. And she she went and Googled you. We're I mean, the, there you go. Like, she like, you know, yeah. she, I go, I go, I know. That's why I said, and, and she says, oh, yeah. He looks much more handsome there. I go, that was at least 10 years ago, that picture. He doesn't look like that anymore. And she goes, she was quite impressed with your resume. You've done a lot of different I, things I, I prior to you in, in your previous life to now life as, as, as working with Shine and being a, being a father. Yeah, and and a husband. It was a different time. That's all. I, I'm an all. I'm 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 a I'm a hundred percent all in kind of guy. Yeah. So when I was an actor, I was a hundred percent into it, uh, which which obviously makes it can make your your personal life a little bit precarious. But I was always lucky to have a very um, solid foundation with my with my wife, and she was always uh, steadily employed, uh, which helped us me which helped us as an actor. But uh, you know, when Colby came along, it was harder to uh, go. You yeah. just felt like after a while, once you have a child, it's not about you anymore, right? No. And as you know. So for me, I was like, you know what, I, 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 love, I love this profession. I've had a certain amount of success with it. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay putting it sort of on the shelf for a little while. And I kind of tried to do it like the two things consecutively uh, for the first year or so. And then, um, and then what I realized is that if I'm really going to take dentistry on, if I'm really going to go after this, this oh, yeah. particular industry, I, I'm going for it. Like I, I want to really get into this because it, it started to become really interesting to me. And, and, and here we are today. Um, Remember when you meet a dentist for the first time, you got to take your business card and just got throw it right down in front of them. That's the way to get their that's attention. That's the way. To get, that's a great story. You should tell that story. Uh, you know, when I it was pretty funny because um, you know when I I, I met uh, Tyler as a as a new rep, my friend uh, Reza. It was we were sitting at craft. Guy. Have you talked right. to him lately? Yeah, he's uh, he, he lives down the street. We got to get him on the show. He, here. he he lives closer than me. Uh, closer to me now than ever, and we never see each other. When he was living in Coquitlam and I was living in Vancouver, it was a lot easier uh, because we, we talked and saw each other more than when he's actually, he lives like five blocks away oh, from my so house. He's doing well? But he's great. He's doing great. He Good. works for, with Uptime now, which is, uh, he, he's out of dental. Right, yeah. I and, think I remember and, that. Yeah. And so, um, anyways, Reza was your, your territory manager at the time. He was introducing yeah. you to... To he me, was our, he, he was our speaking of uh, scanners. He was our Plan Mecca scanner rep. Oh, or, was he? Or, or um, I guess account yeah, manager, or whatever his right. title was. But he was he was kind of the guy in charge of uh, selling the Plan Mecca intraoral scanner. So that's how him and I knew each other. It was funny. So we we decided to meet up, and, and Reza says, "Yeah, I got a new guy. You'll like him." Uh, you know, he, he you know at the time I actually didn't work much with Shine until. Right. Uh, uh, until I met you and 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 Reza, because uh, Reza's a great friend. So you know, mm -hmm. yeah, I I I work like that. I mean, if, if I if I like a company or I like the people, I'll follow the people, uh, because good people are hard to find in different companies. I usually chase the person, and if I stay with companies, Keeping dental that. companies, that if if they're good, I'm I'm very loyal. I'm not a, a company jumper very Thank often. You. So, uh, you know, that, that's how I work. That's how we roll, man. That's how we roll, man. But anyways, Tyler, Ty, Tyler was sitting there, and, I, and 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 I just shook his hand, introduced him. He takes his business card. And I use this for example. He goes, and here's my card, and he threw it down in front of me. And then my first reaction was, "Who is this guy, Reza? Who is this guy? He, he, wait, let's let's do that again." Uh, we had to go. I, I, well, you know, in my, in, so my defense, in my defense, we got a couple of personalities at the table, right? And, and Reza talks you up. He's like, okay, now don't be a wet noodle when we talk to this guy, okay? Like, show him some personality. Ed Lowe is pretty well known to make over, so make sure you, like, like bring your personality, okay? He says, don't, you know, 
So when I showed up, I was like, yeah, hey, how's it going? I'm Tyler. I threw this card down. Well, I, like, it's, what has it been, like seven or eight years? And he won't let me, he won't let me live it down. <laughs> I wanted to take that card and go, um, uh, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do when the guy throws it down? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh. It was good. It was a good first no, introduction. It was, good. And it, 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 it was nice, and you've become a really good rep. Yeah, uh, I'm, 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 I say that from from my heart. It's it, you, you've worked with me in my office. My team likes working with you, and you know that's one of the the nice things about it is that um, you're able to to give give me things I can't get, or if you can't get it, you'll find a way to get it for me. Like it's very easy for a Thank rep you. to say, "Well, we don't carry it. We we can't get it. That's not yeah. our brand. We don't know how to do it." But I you go, that. you it's... take the extra step and kind of go. I know we can't get it, but here's, here's I know a somebody who on. does. Yeah, I know somebody who does, and yeah. I know it's not it's not even our company, but my job, my you, my client is important to me, and I'm going to support you in in in. in Finding what you want, which is that, it, it. It says uh, it says a lot. Well, it's critical, and I appreciate that. Thank you. It's uh, it's important for me. I mean, I have in in the short amount of time that I've been in dental, I think one of my main objectives has been to reach out to as many people as I can and have those resources like Reza and like I mean, even though Reza doesn't work with with us anymore, I mean, I still I, I still speak highly of him. And mm-hmm. if he ever comes back into dentistry, for yeah. whatever whatever reason, right? That's right. If he comes in and he starts selling lasers, or if he starts selling. You know, who, like a CBC team or whatever he wants to start uh, doing, and he's doing very well at what he's doing now. So I, yeah. I'm not going to go that way. But um, it's it's having that network of people of knowing and saying, oh, you know what? I had a few beers with this guy a couple of weeks ago. You got to meet him. He's good. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of which, um, beers? You've met, you've did met, you say beers? Uh, not, oh, not, yeah, yeah, is yeah, it yeah. time? Oh, or are you bringing up beers? There's a six or pack underneath the table here. <laughs> uh, we can skip the dishes summit. No, just kidding. Um, you have mentored me over the years, so I, I want to thank you for that. And one of the things that uh, that I that I brought in with me today is I, I actually got you something. Well, I'm all, I'm all excited. <laughs> a present. It's I hot in here that. too. It's it's hot in here, so it's it's going to be. It's, we'll see how this goes. This might get a little bit sweaty. But uh, Shre- shreddy or let, sweaty? Let me just let me do, just hold on a second. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you the choice. <laughs> <laughs> That makes it even tougher. You so, should just. I know I call this a podcast, but we do videotape it for moments like this as well. Yeah. So, I got a couple of ugly Christmas sweaters, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I think this one might suit you the best because because you do get celebrities coming to your office from time to time. So you get you you do get quite a few American uh, yeah. our American friends come to see you. So I, I figured you know you can not only wear this during Christmas time now. But you can wear this lovely Christmas sweater with a moose on it. <laughs> moose <laughs> when, you're, ah. when you're when you're famous uh, uh, celebrity uh, patients come through the office. Ooh, what do you think, Rook? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, try it on. No way! Come on, I gotta put this over over let's try over it. over the. Uh, I'm you're okay. Let's put the moose back on mine. after I put the uh, the sweater on. Look at yeah, this; the, it's the a moose. beauty. Okay, Check so this out. Happy now we've, holidays. We, we've got a couple things here. You can you can wear the sweater. If it's too hot, I brought you some glasses to wear, just like because we're talking. Would they some, cool me off? Look at this. I slipped it over <laughs> the headphones easily. Some serious dentistry conversation happening here. Wow. So mine, I mean, I'm. Uh, it, it's a little snug. Uh, we make fun of me for being Irish, and I thought, you know, this isn't an Irish leprechaun, but it's pretty close. I mean, it is an elf, and I thought, you know, I might be able to cut the hat off and put a little. Top hat on them uh, when St. Patty's Day comes along. And this is a little snug for me. When does your <laughs> wife need this back by? <laughs> I thought tighter was better. Okay, sure. So wow. I now, now I Look at this. Back. I'm yeah. like Jean Claude Keeley from the 70s. <laughs> that looks good on you. You've been working out. Okay, hold on. Okay, well, just Moosey gotta, sit right about here. You gotta, you gotta st- stick Moosey on your chest there. Oh, that, that's beautiful. I wish. Moosey's on my chest. If you're listening to this podcast. <laughs> Look, I got a baby Bjorn. I'm carrying a child here. <laughs> I'm dying. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hold on. I can put mine on now. Just one sec. You can wear the glasses. Moosey can wear the glasses. I don't need the glasses. I'll look like Elton John throughout this podcast. Okay. So this is I'm roasting in this. That's what I said. I feel I'm like, like a baked potato. I was, I was already hot. Now I'm going to get even hotter. Not in a good way. So you have 
Moosey, my iPad's probably blocking Alfie. What should, what should we call this guy? So are you going to call, what's your name for? I, I haven't decided what I'd name my Moose yet. Okay. All right. So as we said, what is, what's today? December 20th? Christmas Five more sweater. days. Five more days. Christmas sweaters. What do you think? It's a beauty. Can we see that? I can't it's on, on the, f it, the, f it, the five more days left to Christmas. Five golden rings. I know. I asked Katrina what she wants for Christmas today. She got very upset when I asked her that question. Oh, why? She, well, she said, you do know what day it is, right? It's you're, a little deceptive, right? Yeah, it's it's running out of You got plenty I, of time. Because you're a guy. You know why? Because you're a guy. I am a guy. You know what that means? I'm painfully a guy. Because uh, for guys, guys do this. They make their list. And it's like it's it's like a covert operation. You go, okay, here's the fastest path to get in and out. For me, this is what I do. That's, I go, okay, yeah. I gotta go to this store, don't look at other things, go in, get that, get that, get that, get that. And here's a little tip for anyone out there who wants to go Christmas shopping. If if the stores close at nine PM, go at eight because that's the best time. Because most people that will clear out. Time. No, I go in there, it's always dead. Yeah. Don't go first thing or, or first thing when when everything opens because you can just go in and there's no lineups. But I tell you, eight that eight doesn't work now. Or, like when you're within five days, as soon as those doors open, it's chaos. well, that's I chaos. But it. but at night when they're about to close with half an hour left, that's the time to go in there. So you, it's like a covert operation. I got this, bam, 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 back in the car and out of here. Now women shop a little differently. They'll go in, oh, yeah. make a little circle, a take a bunny project. trail here and go, oh, look at this. I didn't know this. I could buy, be buying for next Christmas. I'll buy three of those and I'll go here. And they go, I didn't think about that. And they're in there for hours. That I, I'm, I'm, I'm not being sexist. I'm, I'm no. just saying that's the way that's I shop. That's your personal experience of it. Going in. We're not. We're not get in, get out. We're not <laughs> using a broad brush yeah. here. We're yeah. using, and I, and I have a similar experience. And, 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 and this is the thing is that I, when Katrina shops that way, I love it. You know why? Because it means I don't have to. It means I don't have you to. You just have there. to take care of her. I just that's have to about take it. care of her. Yeah. And she with five days left, really, that's four days too many. Well, <laughs> I, you, you would think that. Because <laughs> I spent four and a half of those days going, I don't know what to get her. What should I get her? You know, but I, I do know what to get her. Of course I do. But, uh, okay. So uh, I also got some, some glasses and a hat. <laughs> do you want the glasses or the hat? It's no, no, really I got some glasses here, here. It's getting a little warm in Can here you? now. That's why I, I stripped down to a T-shirt okay. before I, I, I started the podcast. I might leave the hat for Colby. That's, that looks yeah, pretty, yeah, that's that's pretty small. The, that, that's okay. reasonable. It'll be too warm. The hat's off the table. Hat's off. Can you, can you try the glasses on for me? Oh, I'd be happy this, to. Uh, Look at that. Now, I'd be really impressed if I could fit these around here and make them fit. There you go. They're, perfect. They're beauties. That's good. What, what do you think? Here, now, cheers. Here, here, I think it's time. It's I, selfie time it's, now. It's selfie time because this just is too good. <laughs> I should I even, have the hat on? Hold on. Maybe I should have the hat on for this. Oh, you got to have the hat on oh, for this. Yeah. I, oh, if oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna look festive and ridiculous, the least you can do is look ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. It's getting serious now. I gotta like. Oh, I, it doesn't even fit on my head. My melon is so big. It's large. It's the that, size oh, of that, Jupiter. That looks silly. Oh, that looks silly. Look. <laughs> okay, hold on. Can I fit? See, uh, as long as I keep the ears out, I should stay relatively um, not too hot. Can I? Can I? Can I make this work? How does this work? I think it works. I think uh, you're you're you still see Santa's legs. You know, <laughs> you know what's funny <laughs> is 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 facial recognition on my phone doesn't recognize me. I wonder why. <laughs> I have to have type. I have to type it in because it really doesn't recognize me. You have a Santa hat on your face. That's why. Do I? <laughs> hey, um, <clears throat> you got a Santa hat on your face. Okay, I think it's time to do. Uh, I'm doing a live podcast here with Tyler and McClendon for Dennis on Demand, That's and uh, you're recording we, us, recording ourselves. This is good. Oh, I know. Isn't that great? Because we're in here uh, doing a podcast, and uh, I've got my besties on. I think this looks great, doesn't it? No, I. Uh, do you have any others? I think you're, they're, they're your besties and your onlys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So we covered celebrities you worked on. Um, 
I got some questions here, like you know, what's a crown, what's a veneer? But I think I think most people know most what people those know. Are, here, right? I, I can't I can't see these because these are someone else's glasses. Okay. But I'll That's put okay. them down like this. That's How's a, that? Yeah, give them to um, see there. Yeah, people know. Um, and, and you know, you'd be surprised people that don't know. I mean, what is a? It, I think it's semantics. Like what you know, I'll, I'll make it really easy. A veneer generally covers the front of your tooth. And that's all. It's and like a and maybe, a, like, yeah, maybe a little on top, maybe just around the side, so it you know it covers it. So if you think of a, a, a box, it's covering the front, maybe a bit of top, maybe a bit of the sides. Uh, whereas a crown covers the whole tooth, like like a hat. And I always say it's like a hard hat. And if you got a tooth with not too much uh, tooth structure, like a lot of it's broken down, you got a lot of fillings on it, it can help reinforce it. Okay. A veneer is is a cover. It's like a book cover. And some people say it's a false fingernail. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. It goes on top, and it just you know, changes the color, changes the shape. A little so bit. why would somebody pick a veneer over a crown, um, or vice I, versa? Well, I don't know. I, I why would they pick a veneer over the crown? Isn't the patient's decision? Okay. I think uh, a lot of the time, it's you know the dentist can do some recommendations. If the person comes in and their teeth are fairly or really quite straight, I'm looking at uh, you know something simple like Invisalign orthodontics or or something something easy to get them straight. Because um, personally, I don't want to grind people's teeth when no. I when I when I put veneers on so a lot of times we can do uh, you know you've heard many names they can be called additive veneers prepless veneers no prep prepless veneers, veneers and, like that, yeah. no reduction veneers. there's a lot of names for it. the idea is it, are your two teeth suitable to have veneers put on without damaging your teeth or, or, or cutting away your tooth structure to put it on okay and, so why does somebody want that why does somebody want a minimally what, what is it a prepless veneer well, prepless veneer. I mean, they don't come in saying, "Well, Dr. Lowe, I'd like, I'd like a, a, a prepless veneer or like a minimally invasive veneer." They generally come in saying, "I want veneers," and then and and a lot of the times they say, "Well, what's the process?" I hear they grind away like uh, the front of your tooth to do that. Right. And you know, for some people they're willing to do that. For some people they're not willing to do that. They're saying, "You know, I don't want it done." Now, when I started doing them prepless, I had a number of patients who were finally, you know, after 10 years later plus, were willing to do it because I didn't have to grind their teeth. And that's kind of a nice thing. Look at, you think it's a myth, but no anesthetic, no tooth preparation, mm -hmm. no pain. You just place them. To love you know, if this was a, a, something visual, I could show you, uh, you know, some of the things that are done. But, you know, okay, I got to take this off. I'm dying. Sorry to interrupt you. Carry on. Yeah. You know, but a lot of the time, um, you know, when you... When you come come in and say, "Well, I I, I want to be conservative or prepless," they, they they don't want to cut their teeth down. Whereas in some situations, a person comes in and let's say their teeth are crooked, uh, they've had a lot of fillings, uh, the teeth are are really dark. You know, a veneer is not going to mask it because when you think about it, it's a thin shell. It's oh, like wax okay. paper. You right. know, I mean, you can kind of see through it, and so there may be additional things you need to in order to get the result they're looking for. So having a veneer isn't something they say, I want veneers and I'm going to look like, you know, Orlando Bloom, that per Orlando Bloom or whoever, whoever, whoever they pick as a celebrity, you know, there's challenges because everybody's different. So our job as, as, as dentists who, who do aesthetics is that we look at that. And for me, it's like, how can I get here in the most conservative way doing the least amount of dentistry? So maintaining the original structure of the tooth and enhancing the aesthetics. Yes, without doing doing much to the, the, the teeth themselves. I sound like a dentist now. I know, it's scary. It's osmosis, <laughs> you're, you're picking it up. You're, you're helping you're me. It's like, it's like the Matrix, you become Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off the grid. Mr. Anderson. They keep pulling me back. No, what movie is well, it? They keep pulling me back, I forget. Uh, what what happens is, uh, uh, so when somebody comes in, you know, for me, and I, I can speak for me, and 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 it's it's just, you know, there's no right or wrong, but it's just the way I do it. If I were a patient going to see someone, I want the least amount done to my teeth with the maximum results, okay? So, yeah. you know, and, and as as in, in the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, our, our thing is, our motto is responsible aesthetics, right? So what does responsible aesthetics mean? It means that we try to get a person, you notice this, it wasn't responsible cosmetics, it was responsible aesthetics. What right. that means is that we want to functionally uh, put a person in, in health, meaning getting them functional, getting them healthy, and mm -hmm. have a nice result. That's interesting, because so I was in the office with you the other day, 
Um, sorry, I got some sound effects here I want to try. Um, and we were talking about, so I, I was bouncing some ideas off you because that's the great part of our relationship is mm -hmm. that I get to bounce ideas off you. Hey, Ed, what do you think about this? And we were talking about a video portal for Dentist On Demand. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, the pros and cons of that. Um, and, and then we sort of having, started having this discussion about responsible dentistry. And, and I guess what the, kind of what a Pandora's box that would be if you started talking a little bit about diagnosing stuff over, over Skype or what, like over sort of a video conference type yeah. of platform. Um, and, and what that, I guess, what that, I, the impact of uh, doing responsible dentistry, mm -hmm. if you start going down that road of diagnosing or I don't know, prescribing or identifying issues over, over your computer versus looking at the patient in your chair. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, when I, I, you know, and I, I only bring that up because that. yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not the conscience of my my profession. You know, I I, I know that in every profession, there's you know, 80 percent of the people do it a certain way, 20 percent of people do it things a, a certain way. You know, what is right, what is wrong, and what is the what is the median, right? right. So I, I can't I can't I'm not here to judge what other people do, but in my own practice and in right. what works. In, well in my hands is I have a belief that we have a responsibility to our patients to do the best job that we can uh, to fully uh, educate ourselves to know what to do to get a great result mm -hmm. uh, for our patients and to, to do it in a very conservative way um, you know where it, our job is not to take a patient uh, who has crooked teeth, Bring this little make them all into crowns and spin them down, and and yes, it can be done. But what is what is the what is the the price the patient's going to pay down the road? Well, they have right. to have something redone again. And what is the cost of mutilating your teeth? I call it mutilating because when you take a perfect set of teeth that are pretty good, I've seen, I've seen young people in their twenties come in and they say, "We got these veneers." I say, "They aren't veneers; they're caps." Well, yeah, they ground them down into little nubs. Really, I, th I go, but you're only twenty-three years old. Like, you know, what is the responsible part of it on on the part of the clinician? Now, if 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 the patient signed their life away and literally, you know, I I will do everything I can to have a a young person not do that, right. because if they're well informed, they wouldn't choose that path. You guys, let me give you for example. Okay, let's say the average veneer lasts ten to fifteen years, and a person who's um, let's let's make our math easy. Right. <laughs> Sometimes I pick twenty three and I go like, oh, no, it's hard to add. pause while I calculate. Let's say that. somebody who's who wants veneer comes in and they're twenty five, and I think most people's teeth are pretty good at twenty five. I mean, so if they've gone through, you know, as a child had orthodontics, they had pretty good teeth. But let's say they don't. They come in, and they say, well, I want to get veneers, and and somebody. Uh, and they're crowded, crowded, and they're more comprehensive. So, you know, you hear the term instant orthodontic. We'll, we'll make these crooked teeth straight by just grinding as much way as we can. Um, so that person will have to have it replaced. And I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be generous. I'll say they last 15 years. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they're 25. They replace them at 40, 55, 70, and maybe 85 right. if they choose it. Now let's go 10 years, 25. 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, five times you're, you're going to replace them. Veneers, yeah. There's not much tooth left by the time you're done. Well, veneers, crowns, whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? So I, I, I want my patients to think about that, you know, and what's the cost to them of redoing it? Because it can, it can be a pretty expensive procedure. Right. right. So if you're redoing it every ten years, it's it's pretty expensive. Is that the you lifespan know? of a of a prosthetic, like a veneer or a crown? I, it, you know, I, I I can't say. I they say you know uh, the literature says well on the average ten to twelve years, right, or ten to fifteen years, mm -hmm. right, and, and it depends on the patient's habits, uh, the you know, clinician's um, diligence in placing it. It's like tile, right? You can slap tile on. Or you can put it on very carefully and install it. So how long is it going to last? It depends on the installation, quality of the tile, right? And it depends on, on the floor you're putting it on. Right, the foundation. Yeah, the foundation. <clears throat> if, it's, if it's nice and flat and it's not bumpy and, and the tiles were, were installed evenly and everything fit well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to last a long time. Mm -hmm. What if the foundation was uneven uh, and, and the tiles weren't good quality, they crack? Or the grout you used in between there was was 
was not uh, put on properly, then you're going to have broken tiles, stuff getting under the tiles. I like the tile analogy. <laughs> the tile analogy. Well, it's true. So you had yeah. veneers installed, and, and does, does it, do they crack? Uh, you know, is it, should they not have veneers? Do they break all the time? Does uh, cement, uh, it wasn't installed properly? Does it leak? Does it turn black underneath? There's a lot that goes into it. Hey? Yeah, and, and the, you know, were they uneven? Uh, you know, were the teeth uneven to begin with? Mm -hmm. So when I do, if, if you took a case where you didn't have to do anything with uh, the teeth, that's ideal. Um, if they are slightly crooked, if I straighten them and tip them in a bit, I can do prepless veneers. Half the cases I do or more, I don't touch the teeth. In some case, you can't do that for everything. So yeah. for the person who promises, well, we just do. And I see ads that all the time. Well, our veneers are non-reduction. Really? Are they? You, every single person can have a non-reduction tooth. I'll tell you right now, if those teeth are bell-shaped. You cannot generalize you can't, that. You can't do a uh, prepless veneer because you're and a person wants to, you know, maybe the gap's closed and they're bell-shaped teeth. Mm. Good luck with that because you can't slip something flat over something that's wider on top and thinner at the bottom. So it when you say bell shape, work. so you're, you're talking like the shape of the tooth. like Trapezoid it's shaped. It's wider at the bottom than the top. Well, you know, you know veneers slip on. So how are you going to close the gap by the gum line? It leaves it wide open. Oh, I see. Okay. So you can't do that. It's not going to work right. ever, right? Unless you do it by hand, by, by bonding. You can do it that way because you've got the freedom to do that. But when you take a solid piece and you slip it on... If it, it's always slightly tapered, so it it seals. But if right. it's wider at the, at the top than the bottom, you go seat it, guess what? It's, it's wide yeah, this open. This is wide open, so you're... Yeah, and that's a challenge it's bound sometimes. To fail. Well, it's, it's you're closing it with, uh, you're, you're trying to seal it with grout. It's like tiles that don't come together. The tighter the tiles, they're great, because uh, there's not much grout in between. But if you leave it wide open with grout, the grout's going to wear. Right. So... I like the yeah. tile thing. You I, know, I like it kind of tells you what's going on. My uh, my father in law tiled. He tiles a lot of our a lot of our house for us. It's great having a father in law who's a general contractor. Oh wow! He does everything for us, and he cooks. <laughs> Can I borrow him <laughs> for a while? <laughs> what is it? Uh, yeah, he he is. Uh, That's awesome. He's a magician. He is. He's fully yeah. renovated our house. And no when you talk about tiling, I think about Gary, my father in law, because yeah. he. He tiled our bathroom. He's tiled our front entrance way. He's tiled half of that's, our flooring. I mean, he's—it's just—it's nice. magical it's to have him there. Um, yeah, so I, I always give a shout out to Gary Boyer, my my father-in-law there. Okay, so so talking about orthodontics, I and and you don't have to go down this road if you don't want to. I I, I see Smile Direct show up on yep. my feed a lot. Okay, so I'm just curious what your thoughts on Smile Direct are, and I, I, I'm gonna I might edit this to take Smile Direct out of it, but I. I'm it falls say, in the category of somebody doing aesthetic dentistry. I mean, it's one of our two. Right? Um, well, it goes well. Well, let me backtrack a little bit because earlier on you kind of mentioned that. Oh, what do you think of people getting consults uh, by mail or email or or online? Oh yeah, the video and, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and the video thing. Um, I tell you, you know, you know, it's 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 a start. Right. right, but ultimately you have to go in for an exam and, and spend time with uh, the person you're seeing to actually get a, a feel for it. It's very tough to do things. It can be done. Don't it's get a me start wrong. Of I'm the not, you know, it, it's a start of a conversation. Right, but certainly you know it's not the the middle of the body of it because ultimately, um, if somebody say is from Dallas, Texas, and just say, "Hey, I saw your," you know, and everybody looks good on Instagram or Facebook or, or websites, you know, hey, I saw your stuff, I, you know, I'm excited, and you have video, con you know, video consults, and, you know, here's some pictures of my teeth, what do you think, right? And, uh, you know, if you go on a, a website like Real Self or something, it's a classic for that, people have questions, they put their teeth up there and say, well, what can you do with that? And I see promises made by people that, that, that shouldn't be promising, you know, clinicians are promising, well, we can do this and this and this with you. And it's challenging to do that because it's not, the person's not there. But but I think anyone who wants to, first of all, you should do your, your, your due diligence. Like, you know, I know nothing about roofing, but I certainly need to know if I'm replacing my roof. You know, the, the, the quality of the roofers, their what experience, goes what goes into that, their fees. You know, is that person going to spend time to come out for a site inspection, uh, et cetera? Or are they just going to do it over the phone? Right? So I worry about things over the phone. The same with teeth. 
you want to you want to actually make the trip out there to have a consultation. And I'll tell you, deadly. I have several patients that they say, "Hey, you know what, Doctor Lowe? I saw somebody. It's always oh, it's a better price. It was your price that uh, you know it, it's expensive. Uh, so I'm seeing somebody else." And I say, "Okay, you know, I, I hold said, on, you, hold on." <laughs> and <laughs> and I think it's great. I, I you know honestly, my my answer is 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 never one negative. I know I, I say, listen, you if 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 you can get two veneers for the cost of one of mine, you owe it to yourself to check it out. But make sure you you check out that they do their dil- due diligence. It's quality work. You have a ceramist uh, or somebody building the teeth that's 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 reputable. That knows and what they're doing. Yeah, knows what they're doing. So the the, the thing with that is, uh, you know, when you when you do that, I've had some patients go down, or or another one, they go, they're they're in Beverly Hills. They oh they it, it it's great you know and they and the pictures look great on Instagram and it, it's spa like mm. down there and they they claim oh they, you know I can get a pair of a dip and they'll do a pedicure manicure while I'm doing this oh, and I said well that's sounds I said you know you oh, and, and it's it, you know I, I can make a trip out of it but get, it pains me to see them come back and go I don't like my teeth. It wasn't what I thought it was, or or the the ones that go to Costa Rica or Mexico to get their you know it's like tourism vape, dentistry, tourism dentistry, and they come back and they go, <clears throat> I go listen, they aren't these aren't veneers. This person capped or crowned your teeth, they ground your teeth, and they don't know any better. So you know maybe the person they go see says you know it's you know we always do this, and it'll be better if we did this. And as a patient, you don't really know. So you're you're down in Beverly Hills, you're down in Mexico somewhere. You go, well, I'm already here. If you're gonna yeah, if you're gonna grind it a bit or take some tooth away, okay, well we have to. And they come back with caps or crowns, and now they say, well, can you veneer that? I go, no, it's They've not a veneer anymore. There, you know, we can try and fix it or make it look better. Um, and it, they always come back kind of pasty white for some reason, uh, for the most part. And Cloudy they, white. But it, but I feel for my patients who, or, or any patient that goes down and gets the work done, now you have to fix it. it nobody wins. I don't right. win because I have to fix up a situation well, that could have been much easier before. And there's a, there's a reason that, you know, my day-to-day, there's a reason that the products that I sell to my dental clients have to be Health Canada approved. That no, governing body deal. is there for a reason, right? So it's important to know. I mean, you and I talk about this. And we, it's important to know that what's being put in your mouth has been approved by a regulatory body. Mm-hmm. Health Canada is there for a reason, to make sure, to keep us all safe. Well, you can get, buy what they call gray market products, but, you know, mm-hmm. it may be expired. You don't know that they're, they're, they're legit. Hey, you know what? There's always a better price, so... You know, you, you, we're always looking for a deal, but be, you know, it's always buyer beware. Be careful what you're getting into because there's the, you know, it's. Uh, uh, is this Health Canada approved? That's, you know what I mean? Like that's, is that's it a pretty, safe. But I think, know? I think if, if more patients know that, right? If you're saying to someone, you know, if you're, if you're, and, and I'm not, I'm not sort of putting this in Canada or anywhere else. I'm just saying like, what, what are you putting in my mouth? What is this product you're putting in my mouth? Just start with that basic question. Is that approved? Is there a regular? If I'm in Costa Rica, is there a, is there a regulatory body governing what's being put in my mouth right now? What is that? How's it made? Who approved it? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's for me. That's important. Now, of course, I have an inside track on that. I can see, I see products, and I see the regulatory regulatory bodies involved in this, and I understand that you know this has to get approved by these these bodies before it can be used in the dental practice. But Joe off the street doesn't know that. No, how do you know you're you're getting a, a quality product in your mouth right. from a reputable company? You just don't. You just you know nobody says. Wait a second, what what is that filling material you're putting in? I don't think a patient ever stopped me and says, Wait a second, what's that? You know, where's the crown? Where's the certificate that says right. you know it was it was done by a reputable lab? And dental laboratories are another one. You know, is it you know what lab are you using? Mm-hmm. Right? Is it is it a quality lab? Is it a production lab? You know, is the lab reputable? And I, I, my best analogy for anyone who wants to know is, is that we dentists, we as dentists, we dentist, we <laughs> caveman, in caveman terms, we dentist, we dentist, you patient. Well, um, 
we're the we're architects. We design your teeth. We may get things ready. We shape it, but we also need a builder, which is a ceramist or a dental technician, right, to be yeah. able to build. I may design a great preparation, and you may have a builder build you a tooth that's maybe they're not a, a great builder, but in the end, what do you see? The builder's work, not my design work. Mm. Okay, so you so I'm the architect, and you have a, a builder. In in housing terms, you have. You know, somebody who designed on paper a great house, and then in the end, the house is not see. that well built. Conversely, what if I was a terrible designer and you've got a great builder, right? right. So once again, you know, the teeth aren't prepared properly for the the, the great builder to be able to put a, a great restoration on. So you have thin areas, they're uneven, it cracks, you know, the edges aren't smooth. So once again, in, in house terms, you may have an architect that doesn't design something well. You got a master builder building your house, and then all of a sudden things go wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got things leaking, you know, foundations sinking, and that sort of thing because the architect didn't plan ahead. Didn't plan ahead, yeah. And you know, uh, speaking on the lab side of things, you, you there are authentication stickers, as you know, when mm -hmm. the prosthetic comes back <clears throat> from the lab. There's actually these little um, ident ram stickers. Yes, that come with this it. there so, is. So if yeah. you do have a, if you are getting a crown or a veneer made, and it's coming back from a lab. Uh, and it's made, uh, whatever process it's made by, there, there are authentication stickers you can get. Um, but talk to your dentist about that, and they'll, they'll probably uh, fill you in a little bit more. Okay, we have talked a lot today. Uh, I want to have you back on this, by the way. <laughs> it's, there's there's too much fun to, stuff. I talk too much. <laughs> it's too easy. <laughs> it's too easy. No, it's fun. Uh, next time we'll do, uh, we'll do one in the afternoon, so we can do like a sampler. Like maybe a, oh, that'd a be couple nice. of breweries around Yeah. Here. You know, for me, it's, it's, it's fun talking to you. For me, we just talk because we talk all the time anyways. But yeah. the fact that, you know, I, I give presentations, you know, I teach a study club, I lecture. So this is a comfortable environment. I've done podcasts in the, the past. So. Uh, Sharp, sorry, uh, I'm doing a U-turn back to um, the smile, the, the, the ortho stuff. Okay, let's do that. So let's go. Let's go back to that. I, okay. I was about to wrap it up, but I, I just remembered because I saw my notes here. I, okay. I kind of want to so just talk a little bit clear about that. Clear choice. Question clear choice. Name. Well, I, I don't know. I don't. I want to keep the names out of it. I'm just going to say like DIY ortho or any of that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, I have a lot of friends who are orthodontists as well. So I'm like, you know, geez, like guys, what do you think about this? Like, what's now? We're entering a, a, an era. There's a new, new decade starting in a few days, um, where there's a conception out there or a perception that you can take a picture of your face and send it off to somebody in another far off land and they'll send you back your all your Invisalign trays or, or whatever. I, I won't say Invisalign, I'll just say like a clear aligner mm -hmm. tray system. Um, and you can do your own ortho at home. Okay. So what's your take on that? Once again, it's no different than doing your dentistry in another country that no you different. don't know the person. And here's okay. my take of it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go through this because I, I do this all the time. I do six-month smiles. I do Invisalign in my practice. I am not an orthodontist. I've taken lots of training to do these two particular procedures. So the question I ask is, okay, then why would I ever use an orthodontist? Listen, I've done some of this. I know some general dentists that have done study clubs. They've, you know, they've spent a lot of time. The majority of the practice is orthodontics. Mm -hmm. They're not an orthodontist, but they, they have taken enough training to be an orthodontist, and they know a lot about orthodontics. So those are the people that do a lot lot more of the cases and they're comfortable doing it and it's no different with dental implants it's no different with cosmetic dentistry that's it depends on your training mm -hmm. now if 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 a person comes to me and and i'm an orthodontist mm -hmm. an orthodontist is going to let's say tyler mcclendon <coughs> came in to see me and says you know I never like a little bit of my crooked front teeth and i just like them to, to straighten them out a little bit i'll be really happy right if you went to see an orthodontist, the orthodontist will align your midlines, make sure you're in class one. They will make sure all your teeth occlude. They will twist things around until it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And that's what we strive for with our kids and everything else. But there's a section of the population that says, if you just straighten these out a bit, I'll be happy. So it is not perfect. It's in a zone of excellence that's that the patient can appreciate. Right. And so... With Invisalign, six-month smile, we can get perfect, mm. but we can also take a 
patient where their midline's not perfectly in the center of the face or the upper and lower don't match. Remember my orthodontist, he just, I think he was just doing it for fun because he was a good friend of mine. Just moving my teeth back and forth and just to keep me in it. But I was in it for two and a half years. Okay. okay. In, 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 in Invisalign? It, in, no, in in brackets. In, oh, in brackets. In traditional orthodontics. Oh, wow. Now, if most Invisalign cases I, in, in, and six-month smile cases, I mean anywhere from six months to, to 10 months, a lot of the work is done. I'm not, I'm generalizing here. I don't want somebody to go hold me to right, right. what I just you said. You said six months. <laughs> well, some people are quite complicated and then you got to decide, you know, as a, as a, as a, a general dentist, you, you know, is, do I want to take that on? Cause I have lots of experience or is it better to refer to an orthodontist who has the experience and will take that on using Invisalign or a combination of Invisalign and, and, and traditional braces, right? Right. And that kind of answers, it's a long way around my, my, my question here. In a lot of general practices, it seems like every, every dentist does Invisalign. Mm -hmm. But you've got you've to once again go at, like every dentist does cosmetics. Every, you know, a lot of dentists do implants. But you need to ask good questions as a, as a consumer. Right. So going back to the, the, the one's a small direct club where you can go, um, where you can just stand there and go online and say, well, I'll send this in. Um, I, I will have to say that they can take you if if you got some crooked front teeth, yeah, a photo and and a cast, or they can they can get you to a certain place. But do those teeth come together? Do they fit? Uh, are they under the supervision of of a, a licensed dentist or orthodontist? I can't say that they can promise you that, mm -hmm. but it's I can promise you it's cheap, right? Okay, and so that's why I say buyer beware. I mean, you may not get you may end up with a result you don't like, and then there may be some, oh, um, um, we can't help you here. Um, we're an online, you know, we're online. We're, we're not authorized. We're not, we're not clinicians. We're just, you asked for it, you sent it in, we moved them to there. and You signed it's, the waiver. It's buyer beware. Right. That's that's really my, my take on things. Right. Yeah, because it's not, there's so much about dentistry that's just not black and white. You know, there's, every situation is unique. Because well, every person is unique. Seeing that we're talking about um, cosmetic work, I mean, what are the main things that cosmetic aesthetic dentists do? So, uh, you know, I, I, when you say, well, I want to get something cosmetic, I mean, it'll be, it, it's funny, I always think of, go back to these things, tooth whitening, bonding, veneers. I mean, they, they, they always ask about these things, right? And tooth whitening, you know, Tooth whitening will take you to a certain stage. Right. You can't make gray teeth like as white as the, you know, as white as this, as white as this cop, yeah. you know. And and you've this got to be able to to say, well, you know, there's some limitations here, you know. And that's the same with other products like veneers. There are limitations to veneers, mm -hmm. right? Tooth bonding. We can only bond. You know, there's there's some negatives to bonding, some positives mm -hmm. as well, you know. And I see a lot of you know, particularly implants, for example. I mean. One of the things is, you know, does the dentist place the implants or do they restore the implants? And implants, you know, if you have a back tooth and you stick stick one in there, is that is that is that the extent of what you do, <coughs> or or are you missing teeth and you need a lot of implants? And you see, you see a specialist like Dr. Birdie, whom I work with and and teach with, uh, in a study club that uh, you know there's it's a lot more comprehensive. There's more to it than that. And you may be needing a person that's more trained to mm -hmm. do that. And these are the big areas right now is Invisalign and in and, and office orthodontics, uh, veneers and whitening and implant dentistry. I mean, those are big, big deals. Those are big deals. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift it. Thank you for, for that answer. I think that it's, there, there's so much there, so we can, we can always come back to that as well. Uh, I'm going to um, I'm ask you one last question before we wrap up. Okay. You You're kicking way. me out. You always give me that. It, it, no, it's, it's, a, it's a quiet way of saying, okay. No, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just teasing. I, I'm just I, giving I, you I want to be respectful of your time, too. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question. Sure. Oh, wrong one. Hold on. Mm, new toy. <laughs> Do you read the directions? I, I just highly recommend it. You just, you just put a bunch of buttons there and you're going to test it out. I, I recommend anyone that does a podcast should get one of these. These things are amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. <laughs> Does that get your attention or what? <laughs> what is, uh, what's the future of dentistry? Wow. Um, some people say 
that that's a, dentistry. Well, that's a that's, that's a, a loaded, big question. That's a loaded question. <laughs> um, the future of dentistry is for me is that we'll be moving away from traditional things that we're doing, okay. analog things. Um, most things are going digital. Um, I think it's a great time, a time of growth. And you, when you say digital, uh, it's no different than, than a cell phone or social media. You've got a group of people, let's say 40 and under that are really good at, they've grown up on it. They've grown up on, on technology. They've grown up on digital. They've you've grown up on, on, on all things computerized and you've got 40 and above and, and I'm not, I'm generalizing, but generally, um, we're, we're more analog. And we're we're used to the old things. We're used to the CDs. We're used to the the having to take impressions in dentistry. We're used to to doing things the old way, pouring up casts, right? Right. So when you say what's the future of dentistry, I think it's going digital. I think things are are are, are going digital. We're losing Lucy here. Lucy. <laughs> Lucy. I thought it was Moosey. Moosey. We're Moosey the losing Lucy. Moosey. Lucy the Moosey. <laughs> Well, I think we're going into. Um, I'll give you an example. We used to take impression material, whether it's 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 uh, alginate, uh, you know, the, the mm -hmm. gooey stuff, or, or or polyvinyl, and take an impression. Now we can use an intraoral scanner and digitally scan the person. It's a recurring I mean, theme. Every podcast I've done, I mean, with Dr. Birdie, with uh, yeah. Stan's been on a podcast, um, Leanna across the hall here, she's been on here, and 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 the recurring theme is is when we, when we say to someone what. Okay, everything's going digital. It's a recurring theme. And the recurring theme, scanners. yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's that's what it is. I mean, is it a better time for dentistry? Yes. Uh, is it going to change dentistry? I, I think it's going to change it a lot because I think uh, more people need to get on board with some of the new technology that's out there or you're going to get left behind. Right. And it's no different than, I'll give you a quick example of digital x-rays. I think digital x-rays were one of the first things that came out. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and well, think about digital cameras, too. So you're in an office, you're taking pictures, you take the camera, you take a picture with film, and you got to process it, and you get the slides back, and then load it up for the patient to see. Now with digital cameras, bang, it's right there. And, and who, who, who shoots a film camera these days, right? So well, there's cameras, and then there's, there's sensors, right? So yeah, there's, well, I'm, I'm talking about you know, what I collect for records right now. I use a digital camera. Okay. I use x-ray sensors, right? Because back on x-rays in, in the dental world, you would take it, you would take the film, you'd process it. Go into the dark room. Go into the dark room. Maybe four minutes later, you see whether it turned out or not. Right. And then if it didn't, you have to go back to the patient and do it again. No, no different than a, a, a film camera. Um, nowadays, it's, it's instantaneous. With a sensor, you press a button, you get a shot. Um, you know if you, you got it, if you didn't, you shoot it again with so, less radiation and risk to the patient. Right, so less radiation, so there's less risk. And that, so, like when someone says, uh, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a sensor to take an X-ray of your of your teeth of your jaw," instead of using film. Now, I just want to quickly like break that open a little bit. They're taking a shot, and then that shot mm -hmm. comes up on their, they you, they can pull it up on a computer beside you, right? You can pull it on a laptop, on a computer monitor, what whatever. There's lot, they're getting smaller. I think they can. There's some that you can pull up on your, your phone. IPhone, yeah, yeah. So iPhone I mean, the iPad. speed of that, the speed of being able to like take an X-ray and going boom, there it is. Mm -hmm. I just took it 30 seconds ago or five seconds ago. There's a shot of your face, of your of your the bite wing or whatever yeah. we want, uh, whatever X-ray we're looking at. But just that speed alone, I mean, that technology is it's been around for 10, 15 years. It's not new, but just knowing that as a patient, saying, are you film based or are you digital when it comes to X-rays? No, just knowing that alone is 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 big well that's i think that was the first real start of anything um now you know in your in, in, in your when you say what what's the future besides i think every office is going to have an intraoral scanner soon as standard as as x-ray sensors right i mean i x-ray sensors digital impressions start, impressions digital yeah. scanner i think that's the most useful thing you can get much like an intraoral camera that people used to have, you know, I mean, it, the value of that was invaluable. And I'm talking like 25 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, the intraoral cameras. And I think your next, um, your next, um, not every office can because it's impractical. What you need access to, that's probably a be better way to say it. Access to, yeah. To a comb beam um, CT. Right. Right. 3D picture of the 3D face. picture of the face because once again that's your next uh, area for planning and so with the comb beam CT and a scanner you can 
put it in software to do whatever you want with a person. And I think there will be, one day, there will be no need for dentists. You know, I know that uh, um, if you look now on YouTube and that, there's a, there's a, a robot that can put the implant in. Uh, a person's mouth. It, it's awkward right it's, now. It's Buck Rogers, man. But but a lot of you know you look at a lot of surgeries in medicine are done with, with using robotics, and I think that in the future, um, I'm pretty good, uh, but I'm not as good as a, a robot for for being able to say, okay, this is the tooth preparation we want. Mm -hmm. I think a robot can design it way better than I can. Um, because they've got they've got schematics, they got the prep, they got the the um, the reduction guide in All the software programmed in the I, software. I do it because I can make quick judgment calls and I can see it visually. Wow. But I think that one day you're going to put your head down and a robot's going to come in. They already have machines that clean your teeth. You put your you imagine, like a, like a car wash. Like you put your mouth in and all your teeth are cleaned. That's that's crazy. Say in Japan, the, 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 I saw one uh, on online that uh, showed that. So that's where where it's headed. This is the future of dentistry. Yeah, you said you, you you asked me what's uh, you know what what's going to happen. I think yeah. things are automated. Uh, just simply all the stuff that you use is going to get better and better and better. So maybe more automation with um, a certain segment of dentistry, and then a more human touch on the clinical side, or it's not clinical, but the surgical side. Maybe getting into like actual, I don't even know. I mean, implant placement, uh, bone grafts, sinus well, lifts, any of that kind well, of stuff. Well, even, even, I mean, I, I do know, and Dr. Birdie can talk more about that, but originally when we, uh, you know, I learned placing implants uh, 15 uh, plus years ago, um, you know, it, it was if you did a bone graft, you'd wait six months, you put an implant in, you wait six months, and then you put your restoration on. Now it's more like, you you do the bone graft in, in in a lot of situations. You put your implant in, and it's it's like three months later you get you have a tooth. You're and go. we we as we patients want things fast yeah. and as quickly as possible. And One visit. If you, if <laughs> we we all do. We're that kind of world, right? No one's got time anymore. No one's got time. Everyone it's a one-stop shop, and they want to do it quickly. I found and my dentist on dentist on demand. <laughs> Go in there right now. <laughs> shameless plug. Yes. <laughs> Yay. Yay, Dennis on demand. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you, buddy, for having me. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's fun. Especially the sweater. It's a keeper. It's a keeper. You're going to keep it. So next time I come, <laughs> uh, I want to see Moosey. Uh, yeah, but what if it's like like March when we're doing this? It wouldn't make a lot of sense. I'll, I'll be texting you. I'm like, I'm coming by. I want to see want Moosey spring, today. I want the spring collection. Thank you.